Hey, Nosy Joe here. Gonna do a little garage session today. Working on the 57, working on the engine, unfortunately. That trip to Kansas uh, started developing a problem with the, what I thought was the cam, turned out to be a lifter. But as I dug into that, found out I had issues with the uh, heads and how the valve springs were done. So that's what I'm gonna talk about here right now. Hopefully you guys will learn from this mistake and avoid it if you get Vortec heads on a small block Chevy. Alrighty. So anyway, this is typical uh, Vortec heads. I think these came off of a 98 Chevy truck. Um, and I'm using an old Gen 1 block in this uh, four molt main block in this 57. And I wasn't gonna run the roller cam, so uh, before I used these heads, I just, I gave them to a machine shop and I said, hey, just set these up with valve springs and stuff that'll work with a mild hydraulic cam. And, um, you know, they said, well, what pressures do you want? And I had looked online and they said, well, you know, just typical, like what they call Z28 springs would work. So the machine shop put on some Z28 equivalent pressure springs. Um, they did have these inner spring dampeners on them, as you can see. Well, anyway, so I'm taking this engine apart to check out the lifter problem. I thought it might be a cam problem. It just turned out to be a lifter problem. I kept finding pieces of metal in the engine and I tracked it down and it was actually pieces of this inner valve spring dampener. And the reason why that is, is after I've done some more study, is it's nothing to do with, you know, the wrong spring in terms of pressure, but on these Vortec heads, the valve seals and everything are so much, so high up in the air here that um, that inner dampening spring can come into contact with your valve seal. In fact, on this exhaust valve, you can see what it looked like. I, I removed it, but that came off of here and the one on the far end here. So I'm having to put new valve, sp valve spring seal or valve stem seals in place. So I don't know who to blame. I guess just myself for not specifying. I just thought trusted local machine shop would surely give me the right springs. That's why I didn't do it myself is I said, you know, hey, I'm going to run a pretty mild. It was the L79 hydraulic lifter cam, which isn't even, it's like a 0.45 lift, pretty mild lift, which would have been less than the uh, roller cam that had been in the truck that these heads came off of. So you would think no problem, but you can see how busted up these springs are. This one here actually, actually here, broke some of the outer spring off. I don't think these retainers are right either. So what do you do? Well, I've done some investigation. Number one, you want to get a valve spring that doesn't have the inner damping spring on it. And the popular thing to do nowadays is just to go with an LS6 spring. You can see here the number I use, 26906. I'm gonna put a fairly similar cam back into it, nothing too wild. So these have pretty low spring pressures. They're considered to be a beehive, but no inner damping spring. And then another important key point is getting the right retainers. That's his 78716, also from Comp Cams. And um, what that's gonna do is kind of set your spring height and stuff with your valve locks so that um, there's just there won't be any interference here with your valve seals. So that is the magic trick to running a mild flat tap at cam with Vortec heads. I forget the original reason why I had to change valve springs. I think maybe the valve spring pressures on the roller cam were gonna to be too high. I forget, um, but most people don't run the stock 
bow springs. So you do need to do a conversion, but again, don't do the beehives with the dampeners. You gotta do LS6 springs without dampeners. And then these 787 retainers from comp cams is important ingredient in it as well. And then if you hadn't done the research on this, you do have to use the self-centering rocker arms, which basically look like that. And um, on the tip of the valve there, makes contact there and keeps this thing from rotating. So that's also important. I just thought I'd add, um, as I was doing this project, I purchased a new tool here, this Bluegrass Performance Valve Spring Compressor. It's designed to be used either on the engine or if you have the head off, of course, you know, those great big uh, valve spring compressors that go over the backside of the head are handy in holding the valve. And if you were going to use this on the car, you would need to somehow uh, float the valve up as you're using this. But I thought, well, I was going to do it off the car anyway, and this would just be a handy tool. And um, it is really nice. Um, it, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. It comes with the bar, these nuts and washers. I did kind of modify it. I'm using a little 7 16 uh, socket here so I don't have to run this nut all the way down. Um, but it works out really well here. Let's see. Let's crank that down. Doesn't take a whole lot. Right now you can see my valves are just kind of dropping down with the springs. There's a place where it just kind of feels like it wants to bottom. And so what I do at this point is just get the head up here. You can see my valves have dropped with them. Couple little taps. There. Here goes mine. Anyway, by the way, if you use Octane Booster, that's what causes this orange appearance here. Didn't know that. I thought I had a problem there, but I don't. All right, and then now the uh, valve springs are separate from the valves, and I just take that nut loose, and everything comes apart. So I take that piece off, and now I can just pull the springs out and again looks like I got broken damper and this one's valve seal looks okay looks good let's see what I got here that valve seal survived but pretty sure I got a broken damper on this one as well so almost every one of these valve springs that inner damper is broke off and my understanding of that reason is it's actually coming into contact with this emboss here, which one of the solutions for that is to have these machined down shorter, which just moves your whole valve seal down. But um, you don't really need to do that if you're running a lower lift cam. So the best solution is just to not run a valve spring that interferes with it, which is what I'm doing now. Anyway, hope that helps. Okay, so here's another one on the other head. I'm gonna pull it off. You can see also broken inner damper spring. And then this one's really chewed up the valve stem seal. So I'm gonna have to replace that one. So uh, just a real mess. The other valve stem seal survived. I guess it just kind of depends on the mode of failure of the inner spring, kind of where it breaks. Um, you can you can kind of see on this one here. I think that's evidence of contact right there with that emboss of the valve valve guide. That's where that inner damper spring's interfering. So if that breaks kind of in the wrong place, then this happens. 
So, I, n I noticed the car occasionally smoking a little bit. So I'm guessing that's why that valve stem seal is gone. Ah. So anyway, I hope that helps you guys. I'll put this back together with the right valve springs, retainers, and locks. Um, I'll check clearance on everything. But uh, with this cam I'm running, I don't think I'm going to have any issue. And I shouldn't have ever had any issue, but these, these wrong valve springs are a major problem. So I thought I'd make a little video here and uh, help you guys avoid that mistake. All right, everybody have a good one. Peace out.